Okay, so um, this presentation is about packing up, spreading the task, and also what is what this implies from a scheduling latency point of view. So I'm working for a few months now, even a few years, on the, how to try to improve the power consumption of a platform by minimizing the number of cores that are used, but without um, decreasing the performance or without, mm, yeah, without decreasing the performance, or at least as few as possible. So um, during this presentation, I'm going to speak about two points that what can modify the scheduling latency, and especially the power, the power state of a, of a core that can modify the scheduling latency, that can decrease or make it longer, and also why packing the task can improve both this latency and the power consumption. So um, I will use also, I will make some proposal about how to solve that and where in the code we can uh, make some modification in the, in the scheduler. So don't hesitate to ask questions or to make some comments. So <clears throat> right now, so the, the default policy of the scheduler is to spread the task in the system. And the goal is to minimize the resource sharing and the contention between the task uh, execution. So this policy is quite efficient and work well in a lot of use cases, probably most of the use cases, but this use case generally implies to have a long running task or some memory or CPU intensive activity. Where in this case, these shared resources are the critical parts in the, in the result. But we also have some other use case where accessing to memory or doing a lot of computation is not the primary target. And in this case, spreading the task can sometimes go at the opposite of what we are trying to do. So I have made a simple test with cyclic test. I often use cyclic test because it's, yeah. It just point out all the, the issue you can have with light tasks in the, with the current scheduler. So I have made a, a lot of run with different configurations. I have used various interval between each task wake up. I have also used different configuration, one where I let the task spread in the, in the system, and another configuration where I forced the, the task to be packed in one CPU. And I, I have also made an additional test in which I have disabled the C state. And then I have gathered all the, latent, the, the latency result of cyclic test. So I've taken the mean and the max average latency as well as the standard deviation. And that gives us this, this diagram. So in blue, you have all the latency when the tasks are spread in the system. So in fact, it's, I have done that on the in a system with three cores, and I'm running three, three, cell, three tasks. In red, you can see the result for the packed when the tasks are packed in one CPU, and the yellow or orange one is when CPU, CPU idle is disabled. In fact, when you can only enter the, the, the lightest idle state. So you, you can see that in this use case, spreading the task it's just decreasing the performance by increasing the wake-up latency by nearly half a millisecond. Whereas when it's packed, we have a more stable latency and a, a smallest latency. So based on that result, I have tried to understand why we have such difference. Why spreading the task in the system make the result worse than if we have packed. Whereas we are sharing the resources, not especially the CPU, but at least access to memory or access to some cache and so on. So this scheme tried to describe a typical system. 
So not a large one, not a too small one. Maybe a mix between what we can see on Intel platform and ARM platform. So in green, you have what we commonly say, uh, what we say to be the SMT level in the scheduler. So it's when you have hyper threading between two cores, so they are sharing some core IP. In the yellow part, we have what we call on the ARM world some cluster of CPU that are sharing memory access and resource and, uh, and yes, memory access and cache. So we can have in ARM platform, we can have several clusters like that, which can be propagated independently generally. And then you have the complete system, the complete SOC, with a system bus with some memory, some peripherals, but also some other master in the system like the GPU, like a DMA, like any other, like a modem for some platform. So, so it's just to point out that the CPU is not the only master in our system. This can have an impact when you, you, you want to decide what will be your policy. And you have also some PLL and some power control unit that will decide to pour down one part or another one in the system. So the default behavior, you will have one task in each cluster in order to, to, to have the maximum memory bandwidth and minimizing the, and the goal is to minimize the, the cache uh, fault or miss. So based on the previous scheme, general, yeah. so based on the previous scheme, so you, you can forget each core independently in most of the platform now. We can also power down each cluster and package independently. And generally, you can maybe also power down the associated PLL, or you can power down the power domain, the regulator that power, down, that power this platform. And you can also power down the, nearly the complete system when all the masters are, are off. In some system like that, you can be in a situation where you have only a real small part of the SOC that is power up and that it's just waking, waiting for a wake up event just to pour up everything down. The main issue with that is that the wake up latency of your system will increase with the power down area. The more part of the system is powered down, more time it will take to wake up the core and start to run a task. And in order to add some difficulties, this latency can dynamically change depending of if you can or not pour down a PLL which is shared with another system. So, or if you can pour down some regulator on some peripheral. So at the end, you have some range of wake-up latency based on how large the, the SOC is down. So these are some idle statistics for the tests I have shown before. So I have taken one use case with an interval of 1.8 milliseconds. So the first table is when the tasks are spread in the system, and the next one is when the task is are packed. So <clears throat> we can see, so yes, in this system, I have two systems. The first one is just we are, I'm, the C0 state is that I'm ready to wake up and to run, whereas the C1 is that the core needs to be powered up and you have some latency of around 400 microseconds before being ready to run something. And what we can see is that we can, for most of the task, so for two tasks at least, we are always waking up from this C1 state, which takes time to wake up. And because of that, the latency of your system will be increased by 400 microseconds. Whereas any reason for us? I mean, we don't really need to use another CPU for this task. And the only effect is that we will increase the wake-up latency. Whereas when we pack all the tasks in one core or in one cluster, depending on the use case. So we can see that CPU1 and CPU2 stay in, the, in their deepest C state without being wake up. And only the CPU0 can be wake up, is, is waking up regularly and will be taking charge all the activity. 
So based on that, we can see that the wake-up latency of a CPU is an important part factor when you want to choose which idle CPU I should wake up in order to run a task. Because depending on your load, the load of the task, and depending on this wake-up latency, you can make the wrong decision. <clears throat> so the, the, the proposal, yes, is when we select an idle CPU in the scheduler, so generally in the, the select task RQ function, we are looking, we are, select, uh, yes. we are comparing the previous and the current CPU, and then we are looking for a CPU which shares some, some cache with us. And if this CPU is idle, we can decide to migrate the task on that. But when we are doing that, we should select the idle CPU with the shortest wake-up latency, just to make that more fast. And even that, it's interesting to compare the runnable average of a task, which is an, an indication of the, the load, the, the runtime of this task, and to be sure that we will not take more time to wake up a CPU than just waiting for a sketch slice in the current CPU. For doing that, so in the scheduler, the, the weighted CPU load is now using the runnable average sum and period to compute this load of a, so is just adding all the runnable average load, or the runnable average contribution of each task on the CPU to evaluate the load of this CPU. But all the idle CPU have, an, have a, a neural load. So by default, they, they will be choosing priority. So the, the proposal is to modify this weighted CPU load for the idle CPU. And in order that this load will be no more null, but will reflect the effort or the cost of waking up this CPU based on its current idle set. So, yeah, we have tried to use the, the block load in addition. The main issue with the block load is that it gives you a view of how many tasks it will probably run in the coming. Right, yeah. So yeah. Then you get the chance that the you wake up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can. Maybe we can do that, yes, but we can have a huge difference between the block load and the, the real um, idle state of the CPU. I mean, just the, the two, the two um, value can be at the opposite. There is no real link between the C state you can reach and the block load, that's why. Is there an additional mic? Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll just come back on this uh, discussion. 
So the goal, yes, is no more to choose. Right now, we are choosing the first idle CPU in a CPU map. That's just because we, don't, we can't see any differences in between all these CPUs. So instead of that, we should use the weighted CPU load when we are selecting an idle CPU, especially mm -hmm. in the select mm -hmm. idle simling mm -hmm. function, for example. So, OK. So we want that we can continue on the block load average and uh, So I was suggesting it might make more sense to use the block load to pick an idle CPU uh, in particular. So right now, weighted load maps directly to Reynolds average, which is always going to be zero on an idle CPU because that's how it works. Uh, picking block load gives you the chance that a, uh, gives you more of a hint as to the chance that something else will wake up onto that same CPU, yeah. so which we would let you maximize the chance that the idle CPU you pick to wake up will benefit another task following it. But yeah, the thing is that we can have a, 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 a large value for the block load because a lot of tasks have just stopped and you are coming back to an idle situation where the next wake up, the next predicted wake up of the CPU is quite long. And in this case, you can reach this deep C state. That's why. Maybe we can have a mix of both. Maybe, maybe the wake up latency is not just enough. We can make a, a trade off here. Yeah. Between, yeah. So, is this enough? Can we just use the wake up latency of a CPU when we look for an idle CPU? Is that will solve all our issue? In fact, so if I'm asking the question, is because it's not enough. So we, are, we have some situation where the choice between CPU is not large enough in order to, to make that efficient. So you can be in a situation where a task will wake up on a CPU and you will have choice between this one and the previous one, which is the same, for example, if you are using a timer. And if you are not sharing some cache with the other interesting CPU, you will not be able to use this ready to wake up CPU. So this use of the wake up latency in the select, in the wake up pass is interesting to have a yes, uh, a fast decision or to make the, just to choose the, the right CPU in a um, reduced bunch of CPU. But you must also choose, uh, you must also be sure that you will not have some small activity on different places in, in, in your system. So you must force all this scheduling in a limited area based on the current activity, based on the current task. And that's why we would like to pack all the tasks. So not only for saving power, but also so, as we have just seen, to reduce the, the wake-up latency or the scheduling latency. So right now, the scheduler know a lot of information about the CPU. If some CPU are sharing their core capacity, so if we are, have some hyper-threading, if they are sharing some resources, like the cache, like the memory access. But it doesn't, it, it, it it doesn't have any knowledge about the power of dependency of each CPU, which CPU share the same power domain or can't be power gate without power gating another CPU. Sorry? Sorry, If there is some power dependency, but but that's quite important when when you when you need I mean when you need to choose some CPU and you know that you don't have to be at the highest performance capacity, you need to know which CPU 
to choose in order to be able to power down some part of, of your system. Yeah, so I think that we don't need to have the full details of the port topology of the system, but at least to know, I know that if I'm using this CPU, all the other one will stay in a ready state to run. And in this case, this have, if I have some other activity to do, I should probably use this one instead of trying to waking up another CPU in another cluster, in another package, and so on. That's the point. My goal, my goal is not really to, to have the complete description of how many C states you need, you have, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Was there ever any progress on that? We kind of I would say that we don't have much more progress. We have tried to. So I, w I, w I would say we're still interested in doing it, yeah. but we haven't done it. Okay. Yeah. So you're still, we're still willing. We're still willing to do it. It just hasn't happened. So, yeah, so we don't have any knowledge of the power dependency of the CPU. And if we want to save power by packing tasks, so, yes, we would like to save power by packing tasks in a small area of the, of the core. Now, packing tasks must not be the only goal, just packing for packing. We want to pack tasks, so if this case improves the latency, as we have seen previously, and also, if this can improve the power consumption by increasing the power down area, so just to increase how many gates you can power down. So this is an example, a simple example of that. We have the two tasks that run in one cluster so that we can power down one part of the system. But what we want at the end, how? Yeah. For these systems, how reasonable an approximation is the last level cache domain for this? Sorry. How reasonable an approximation is the last level cache domain? I'm not sure to have catch the the yeah. last the last level of cache is. How, how reasonable approximation of the maximum like things that if you took tasks of them to minimize? Yeah. Is the last level cache domain for this? The last of cache level is in each cluster. Right, yeah. so, so, I'm, so yeah. that basically gives you a cluster. I'm saying, yeah. how good an approximation is that? What, what other information do we need in germ, typically need? Because uh, the scheduler does know that. So I'm just asking what other information you think we need. Yeah, um, just because you can be in a... So the last level of cache is most of the time one power power level, but that's not enough. You can be in a situation where you can forget an upper level, I mean, you can forget each core independently. And this core will share their cache. Or at the opposite, you can be in a situation you can, where you can't pour down a cluster without pour, pouring down the complete system. It's just that, yeah, in, 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 in a lot of systems, the um, power down level is linked to the last level of cache, but that's not enough. That's not always the case. So, yeah, so we don't want to just decrease the power consumption at one moment. We want just to save energy at the end. We want to save our battery life. So if we pull down some part, but increase the running, the running time by much more um, time that it's yes. If the, the goal is that at the end, we will save some energy in, in our battery. So packing tasks, but running longer, doesn't really make sense. That's why we can't do that all over the time. That's why we can't do that with some EV task and so on, just because if you pack all some CPU or memory intensive tasks in one cluster, for example, 
you will run longer because you have to share some memory. And at the end, your battery life will be shorter than if you have spread everything. And one additional difficulty is that each platform, depending on its process, depending on a lot of things like the temperature and so on, will have a threshold where it's useful or not to pack that will be different. I mean, the leakage have an impact on is it useful to pack or is it better to race to idle? And this value will, will, can change over the time. I mean, you can start to say, OK, I have a small leakage. I can, so I have a small leakage of the complete system. So I can afford to pack just because it's more efficient. But you can be in another situation where because of temp, your leakage is increasing. The leakage of all the system is increasing. And in this case, it can be no more useful. So what we can know easily is that all the CPU sharing some power, um, power state or not. That's the first point. So describing this topology. For that, we, we want to use a new flag, which is simili similar to sharing the CPU power or sharing the resources. <clears throat> and we let the architecture describe this topology, thanks to a function which, so this function is used when we are building the sketch domain, just to set or clear the flag at each sketch domain level and for each CPU. And furthermore, for, for the ARM part at least, the, propos the proposal is to use the device tree so that when you have a platform, in your device tree, you can explain this CPU can be propagated independently from the other one at this level, at the CPU level, or at the cluster level, or at, an, at another level. This will be used to set or clear the share pardon flag so that your sketch domain will reflect the, the topology of your system. So that's just a simple relationship. You don't have how many power you will save and so on. But that's probably a good starting point, and you can, we can make some, some power savings thanks to that. So once you have this description of the topology, how many times? Okay, so once you have this description, the scheduler, you need to create a list of packing CPU. And the rule is that we will pack the task only if we can pour gate or pour down the CPU that we want to keep in idle. That doesn't make sense to pack in one CPU if the other ones stay in this consuming idle state. That's why when <coughs> The goal is that if you need to use one CPU which shares power domain with the other, in this case, you will use all this <coughs> CPU and use this race to idle policy. <coughs> then when you, want to when you create this list of packing CPU, which CPU I need to use depending on, on, the, capacity, on the activity of your system, we are going to try the, the CPU with, with the lowest capacity for first. Just because we are making the assumption that this will be more power efficient. That's the, the case for the big little system, as an example. And I don't know if there is other platform that have this different capacity between CPU. And at the end, if you if everything is equal, you need to make a choice. And in this case, we come back to the <coughs> scheduler behavior that is using the first CPU in the mask, just because it's how the scheduler do right now. So just try to be aligned with this behavior. Cool. There's yeah. also architectures where the first CPU in the mask is the fastest. Sorry, there there's, is? There's architectures where the first CPU in the mask is the fastest. Yeah. So it makes, that's, that's why the policy is to use okay. the first. So the goal, this is an example of a packing policy. So if you have a, a platform, 
which have been described as sharing its power state. All the CPU are sharing their power state. So this is the default configuration in the patch. If you don't do anything, we assume that you can't forget each coin independently, which is the default behavior of the, of the scheduler. And in this case, you, your list will be made of only one element with all the CPU. And you will just behave as usual. So spreading the task in this group. Now, <clears throat> if you can forget only the cluster or the complete system, in this case, you will have two lists, two, two elements in your list. And we'll start to use the first, the first group. And once you need more capacity, you will also use the other one. But all the C CPU will be used at once. And the last configuration is when you can forget at all level. In this case, you will start to use only CPU 0 and 4 and so on. And you will add this group of CPU, depending on your need. So in order to, to update the list, how many CPU I need, we need to monitor the activity of the system. And for that, we are using the runnable average sum and period that's a good indication of the activity of, this, of a CPU. And we also, yes, just because some CPU can have different capacity, either because of hyper-threading, because of real-time tests that can have stalled some time, some running time, or because of big little um, topology. So we are also using the CPU power, the CPU capacity, to compute the complete activity of the system. And that will be used to decide how many CPU we need. And just, and the choice have been made to sync this activity monitoring with the load balance. So we will not do a complete system monitoring periodically, but we will use the load balance and just monitor in the same sketch domain level that the load balance occurs. So just to, to, to keep the, the scalability of the load balance. Mm, yeah. Uh, yes, only the, during the idle load balance. And uh, periodic load balance. We can, no, we are doing that in the periodic load balance as well, yeah. Just not in the newly uh, load balance. We are not doing that there, but otherwise, just monitor that periodically. So from this activity, we can deduct how many CPU is needed, and you will enable, you will take some group of CPU in the list. And then we want to ensure that the target CPU of a task will be in this list. So that at, at wake up in the select task RQ, we are just checking that the selected CPU will be in the list. And if not, because, so in the, in the when a task wake up, we first try to, to choose between the current CPU that is running and the previous one but both can be out of this packing list because we have reduced the number of CPU and so on. So if the selected CPU is not in the list, we will force to use what we call a buddy CPU that will handle this activity, that will force the packing of the task in, in this restrict, limited uh, list of CPU. And the last point is that the new task can use a CPU which is out of the list because our activity is, be, is based on the running task, so a new task, we don't have any idea of if it, that will be a long running task or short one. So we can use another CPU and then based on the increase of its uh, load average, it will be part, it will be migrated in, the, in, the, in this packing CPU or it can stay and we will add a new CPU in the list. So is it enough? Just doing that, uh, right now for, for this implementation, for our goal is just to use to monitor the load average. But you can be in a situation where you have, for the same load or for the same activity, you can't make the difference between this activity generated by only one, C, one task or by 10 tasks. And this can have an impact in the latency of the scheduling, and this can be used to make different choice in how many CPU we need. So that's probably something we need also to add 
to use the number of running tasks to deduce should I really pack on one CPU or should I use 10 CPU because it looks like we have a lot of parallel tasks running simultaneously. I think it's not on. Yeah. Calculated um, in the time frame. Uh, so, for instance, in this span of time, you calculate that number, and then you have as many computations, but then later you will have more computations coming. Will you recalculate that number, or how often do you do that? So, the, the, we are using the, the, the load average computation that has been pushed by uh, Paul, which is a geometric theory that makes a uh, yes, an average, that's just an estimate between the new value for, and the, the last one. And the goal is, yes, it's just uh, an approximation of the last millisecond. It's, but uh, we are not so, yeah, we are doing that for all tasks. And then we are adding this activi the activity of each task for the CPU. So we are not, we are, uh, right now we are only using, yes, the running time. That's all. But yeah, we would like probably to use more information. Some other information based on the scheduling latency and so on is probably also, and um, I think Daniel and Tuka will speak more about that, is, is this CPU wake up sooner, or quite soon in fact? We're now, we now able to predict the next wake up time of a CPU. So when you are selecting a CPU, you can either choose a CPU that will wake up sooner, or someone that will not be used. So that's some additional information that can be used. But at the end, it's only that what we mean by system activity and how we use that to select the CPU. Once you have this topology list, you can just update or improve the, the, the algorithm to choose the, the CPU. Is there any question? I think I'm out of time. Yeah, okay. Probably that should have been better that Alex will be there to explain that. My understanding between his patch and my patch, the difference is mainly that uh, for Alex, he is trying to pack on around the CPU that, that is currently used. And it doesn't really care about which CPU is, is used in your system. Whereas in my proposal, I try to found the best or the, yes, the more efficient CPU in our system. So I think uh, Alex's did uh, not consider the power to Yeah. That's probably one, yes, the main difference. Then the way we are computing the activity, we are not doing that at the same time, but that's only a matter of, of implementation. Can you summarize what you think are the next steps? So um, the, the next step is to, to get some um, more figures on various systems because I'm mainly testing that on, on ARM platform because that's the one that are available for me. And also to, to, to look at uh, how we compute this system activity, what are the, the main drawback of just using the runnable average. Can't we have some situation where the packing will, have, will be worse than the default behavior. So 
we must be sure that if we pack, we will not increase the, the, the global power consumption because of running longer. That's one point that uh, we need to check. Uh, so <coughs> that's what I was wanting to ask about. Uh, you showed the, some measurement results, and uh, it would be good to know what system you used to get those results, because yeah. uh, it, otherwise it's unclear. Uh, what we are talking about, and so what? What the system? What, what so was the system? Right now, I'm using ARM platform mainly. I, I haven't see. done some tests on a Intel machine, but we have planned. We, that's planned for us to 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 increase our um, park of machine to include some X, some Intel machine. Yeah, because it is not clear right now that you know the changes that we are going to make will actually benefit all the systems that yeah. are in question, right? So that's important. Uh, I would recommend to use as, as the newest possible hardware. I mean, whatever is, Haswell is okay, yeah, I think. Yeah. The one thing that was worth noting is that if the arch has an exposed power collapse, then it will favor a spread policy, right? So you can favor a spread policy up to whatever domain you want. And that was why the behavior for an arc that doesn't tag anything was unmodified. So it seems like a reasonable compromise. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So in the implementation uh, I have, you can you you have a, a pro country to select the packing threshold of your system, just because we can. I can understand that each all the system doesn't need the same packing threshold or the yeah level, and we can imagine that above one value, it's no more interesting just because you will yes increase. The, the, the frequency in the voltage and uh, the power consumption, the power efficiency will be lower. But at the opposite, we have some, some system that want to use the minimum number of CPU just because of your max power, uh, uh, max power delivery. And if you are reducing the number of running CPU, you can increase the max frequency of your, of your CPU and you will run faster as well. So that's another way to rest wider sometimes. I agree that um, we will have a lot, yeah, several specific use cases that we will have to address with various ways to, to tune the, 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 the behavior. So the first one is have a, a, a good description of the power topology. The other one is trying to pack up to a level, but that's probably not enough. Can I encourage you to talk yeah. to you more about the work and, uh, Thank you.